solve problems on the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says that if f is a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there's a point c between a and b such that fb minus fa equals the derivative of f at c times b minus a, or the derivative of f at c is fb minus fa divided by b minus a. The quantity fb minus fa divided by b minus a is the slope of the blue secant line shown here in this picture. The secant line intersects the graph of f at the points a, fa, and at the point b, fb. The point C is such that the derivative of f at C is the slope of the secant line. This means that the corresponding tangent line is parallel to this secant line. So the mean value theorem simply says that there is a point C such that the red tangent line is parallel to the blue secant line. This has important consequences. The first one is that if the derivative of a function is zero for all x, then the function is constant function. And second statement is that if the derivative is positive for all x, then f is increasing. This second statement, the condition that f prime of x is positive for all x can be relaxed. It suffices that f prime of x is positive for all x except for a finite number. If that is true, then the function is increasing. We use the mean value theorem to solve the following problems. In the first problem we saw that the function x plus sine of x is increasing. In the second problem we consider the function x to the power negative 2 we have to show that one cannot find a number c between negative 1 and 1 such that the statement of the mean value theorem applies that is f at 1 minus f at negative 1 is f prime at c times 1 minus negative 1. And then the question is, is this a contradiction to the mean value theorem? In problem number 3, we assume that f is differentiable and that f prime, the derivative, is increasing. Our task is to show that the graph of f lies everywhere above its tangent line, except, of course, for the point of tangency. So we have to show that if f prime is increasing, then the graph of f behaves like the graph in this picture on the left. To show that the function x plus sine of x is everywhere increasing, we use the corollary to the mean value theorem, which says that if the derivative of a function is positive except for a finite number of points, then the function is increasing. The derivative of x plus sine of x is 1 plus cosine of x. This is never negative, but it does take the value 0 when cosine of x is negative 1. That is when x is pi plus any even multiple of pi. Now, we consider this function on a finite interval from a to b. Then on this finite interval from a to b, the derivative is positive except for a finite number of points, because at only finitely many points of the interval from a to b, cosine of x can be negative 1. So we can conclude by the corollary to the mean value theorem that this function is increasing on any finite interval from a to b, and then it means that it is increasing everywhere. Since it is increasing on any finite interval from a to b, the function is everywhere increasing. Consider the function f of x equals x to the power negative 2. Our task is to show that one cannot find a number c between negative 1 and 1, such that the statement of the mean value theorem would apply to this function over the interval from negative 1 to 1 with this particular choice of c. That is, we cannot find c such that f at 1 minus f at negative 1 is f prime at c times 1 minus negative 1. And then the question is, is this a contradiction to the mean value theorem? So we have to show that the mean value theorem does not apply to the function 
x to the power of negative 2 on the interval from negative 1 to 1. First, a differentiation yields that the derivative of this function is minus 2 times x to the power of minus 3. And f at 1 minus f at negative 1 equals f prime at c times 1 minus negative 1 now becomes 1 minus 1 equals 2 times f prime at c. And this means that 2 times f prime at c is 0, that is f prime at c is 0. But f prime at c is minus 2 times c to the power minus 3. This is never 0 for any finite value of c. And therefore this is not satisfied by any finite value of c, and this means that the statement of the mean value theorem does not apply. And this means that the tangent line of the graph of the function f, that is the red curve, is never horizontal, because the corresponding secant line of the mean value theorem over the interval from negative 1 to 1 for this particular function, f of x equals x to the power minus 2, is horizontal. That secant line contains this blue line segment shown here in this picture. Now this is not a contradiction to the mean value theorem, since the function f is not even defined for x equals 0, let alone being continuous or differentiable. Hence, the function does not satisfy the assumptions of the mean value theorem, and the mean value theorem does not apply. The function f is differentiable, and f prime is increasing. Our task in this problem is to show that the graph of the function f lies everywhere on or above any of its tangent line. That is, our task is to show that the graph of the function f be behaves like the green curve shown here in the picture on the left. In order to do that, we have to compare the values of the function f to the corresponding y values or obtained from the equation for the tangent line. The equation of the red tangent line is y minus f at a equals f prime at a times x minus a. This is the line going through the point a, f at a, with the slope f prime at a. From here we solve, we get y equals f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. And our task is to show that f at x is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. Let us take a little bit closer look at this situation. So we have to show that f at x is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. And here f at x is uh, denoted by this dotted line above. It is uh, the point on the y-axis being the y-coordinate of the point x f of x. And the corresponding point on the y-axis which is denoted by the dotted line below, is f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. Our task is to show that this picture is a faithful presentation of this situation. We do not yet know that this picture is correct. The only thing we know is that the derivative of the function f is increasing. Our task is to show that this picture is correct. And in order to do that, we observe that by the mean value theorem, we can find a point Cx between A and X such that F at X is F prime at C of X times X minus A plus F at A. This is always true. In this picture, X is larger than A, but the same is true if X is less than A. Then this point Cx would be just on the interval from X to A instead of the interval from A to X. So the task is to show that f of x is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. So the task is to show that the picture on the left is accurate. And we assume first that x is larger than a. Then x minus a is positive. And by the mean value theorem, we can find a point cx between a and x such that f of x is f prime at c of x times x minus a plus f at a. Since Cx is between A and X, and X is larger than A, Cx is also larger than A. And since F prime is increasing, this means that F prime at C of X is larger than or equal to F prime at A. 
And now also x minus a is positive. So since f prime at c of x is greater than or equal to f prime at a, when we multiply both sides with a positive number x minus a, we still get an equality in the same direction. So since x minus a is positive, this inequality f prime c of x is greater than or equal to f prime at a implies that f prime cx times x minus a is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a. And this means that f at x, which is f prime cx times x minus a plus f at a, is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. So this concludes the proof in the situation that x is larger than a. We still have to deal with the situation where x is less than a, like the one shown here in this picture. If x is less than a, then x minus a is negative. And we still can find a point cx between x and a, and now it is in the interval from x to a, such that f of x is f prime at c of x times x minus a times f at a. And since f prime is increasing, and now since cx is less than a, we conclude that f prime at cx is at most f prime at a. But now x minus a is negative. When we multiply both sides of this inequality by x minus a, we have to change the direction of the inequality. So the fact that f prime at c of x is less than or equal to f prime at a implies that f prime at c of x times x minus a is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a. And this means that f of x is greater than or equal to f prime at a times x minus a plus f at a. And this is what we were supposed to show to be true. And now it has been shown and the problem is completely solved. To summarize the discussion, let us now recall that the mean value theorem applies to functions which are continuous on a closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the corresponding open interval from a to b. For such functions, there is always a point c between a and b, such that f prime at c is f b minus f a divided by b minus a. Graphically, this means that there is a point c between a and b, such that the line tangent to the graph of f at the point c, f, c is parallel to the blue secant line going through the points a, f at a, and b, f at b. So these two lines shown here in this picture are parallel. The mean value theorem is a big sledgehammer. It has two important corollaries, and uh, it is these corollaries that are most often used. The first one says that if the derivative of f is zero for all x, then f is a constant function. And the second corollary says that if the derivative of f is positive for all x in an interval from a to b except for a finite number of values of x, then the function f is increasing. And these two corollaries are the most useful applications of the mean value theorem. The power of mean value theorem is used normally by these corollaries.